Now let's start, turn to the situation in Haiti. The United States says it expects a transitional council to be in place in Haiti over the next two days as the violence-ridden country is left without a leader. It will be tasked with nominating a new prime minister following the resignation of Ariel Henry on Monday. The UN says it strongly hopes the agreement will help end the violence carried out by the gangs that control much of the capital. Gang leaders had demanded the prime minister step down. Our Central America correspondent, Will Grant, is just outside of Haiti and sent us this report. Crossing between the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And we've already seen the Dominican authorities deporting Haitians back into the poorest country of the Americas at a time that it's facing its most acute humanitarian crisis since the 2010 earthquake. It's also that they're being deported into a political vacuum. Prime Minister Ariel Henry stood down, citing the fact that his situation was untenable given the violence on the streets of the capital, Port-au-Prince. His decision came after the CARICOM group of Caribbean nations and the US Secretary of State held an emergency meeting in Jamaica and made clear that they saw the roadmap towards a transitional administration in Haiti starting with his resignation. So what happens next? Well, the truth of the matter is that unfortunately things can still get much, much worse in Haiti. The gangs are going to feel considerably emboldened by the fact that they have forced Mr. Henri from power and they already control around 80% of the capital, Port-au-Prince. And the hopes for a 1,000 strong Kenyan-led security force are beginning to hit difficulties as the Kenyan authorities themselves are saying that you do not deploy police to the streets of Port-au-Prince without a sitting administration. The BBC's War Grant report in there. Well, let's get more on the humanitarian situation in Haiti and speak to Francesco Sigoni, a spokesperson for MSF, an aid organisation which has worked in Haiti since 1991. And Francesco joins us from Paris. Great to have you on the programme. So the violence, especially in the capital, has been escalating over the last couple of weeks. What are your colleagues witnessing on the ground? Well, what they're witnessing right now is the city in a state of chaos at the moment. The city has been devastated by two weeks of virtually unchecked political violence that honestly I'm not hesitating to call unprecedented. And we've worked there for more than 30 years, as you said. Uh, many public and private hospitals in the city have stopped functioning, either completely or partially, due to their personnel just not being able to go to work anymore or to supply issues. Uh, some hospitals are still working but have no functional operating theatres anymore. So to be able to care for an increasing number of wounded people over the past 10 days, we've had to increase the capacity of our main hospital in Port-au-Prince by over 50% and open two new facilities, another hospital in a different part of the city and an emergency centre. Because, as you mentioned there, there's a struggle in terms of access to healthcare, and that's also because nurses and doctors have had to abandon medical facilities because of the violence. What impact does it have on communities? Because it's not just those who are wounded, it's those who are also suffering from everyday illnesses who can't get the help they need. Absolutely. And access to healthcare has always been an issue, at least since uh, 2021, uh, when former President Jovenel Moïse was assassinated. Since then, political turmoil and violence has been an issue that has actually impacted on access to healthcare in the city. And like you said, chronic disease, long-term disease, as well as emergencies and trauma have been all, um, all patients have been struggling to find access to health care. Right now, it, it, I think the situation is more critical than ever, including for uh, our hospitals very soon, because right now our priority is to be able to access the medical supplies that are stuck at the port. Uh, just before the chaos broke out, it had taken months for us to clear the customs, and when that was done and we were ready uh, to have the supplies delivered, then violence broke out and the port became inaccessible due to that. So now we need access to our containers as soon as possible because our hospitals are still working, are still fully functional today, uh, and their work is badly needed. And, and uh, access has it, been it, such a huge, huge issue. I just want to get briefly your assessment on whether a transitional council would help improve the humanitarian situation. 
to be honest, that's difficult uh, to say because we're not really uh, able to, um, to to speak as common as political experts. What we need, obviously, is any kind of stability that will allow people uh, to have some ability to, to seek the health care they need and to be able to move around in the city. Thank you very much. That's Francesco Sogoni, spokesperson for MSF. Thank you.